Welcome to the great Gaia's impression video, you great bastards. This is classical JRPG by an indie developer called Horizons and just two guys creating what they love. I've been talking to the developer and I think uh, he said that they were working for 7 years on this game and it is truly a passion project. If you like what you see and you want to play this game and you are my patron on Patreon, post in comments your Patreon username and I will decide who gets the key randomly. This is only an early impression video, this is not a review of any kind. I have three and a half hours game time with the great Gaias, so I can tell you a bit about the game and what I consider to be good sides and some bad sides as well. The Great Guys is a classical JRPG inspired by earlier Final Fantasies and games like Chrono Trigger and they are not ashamed of admitting it, nor they should be. This game captures that classical JRPG feeling beautifully and we are truly missing these types of games in this day and age. We recently had Octopath Traveler on Switch which is a huge success so there is definitely a demand for these types of games. I haven't played such an RPG in a while and I must say that I could not stop playing this. This game gets the core of those games very, very nicely, especially the writing part. Story is amazing for these three and a half hours that I played the game. It really got me hooked and I wanted to explore what the hell is going on and what's gonna happen next. Absolutely amazing writing, you won't find a better job anywhere else. I won't tell you too much about the story because I have limited knowledge about it. It's up to you to check it out if you want to play the game, but I can definitely tell you that it's the best part of the game. Also the party members have been done really nicely. Everyone feels unique, everyone is good at something, everyone's got completely different take on the world and the situation that you're in. World itself is vast, plenty of races. For example, early in the game you're gonna be caught by Minotaur pirates. Yep, pirates that are Minotaurs. There is obviously a lot more to discover. But now let's switch to actual gameplay and how it all stacks up with this fantastic story. While exploring the world you will find lots of things that you can loot. There are hidden items everywhere. Potions, tonics, weapons, armor, whatever. There are also materials that you can pick up, I believe there's a crafting system as well in this game, but I did not get to that point yet. There's a bit of an annoyance here. In this game dice rolls are present and they are used to lockpick chests, disarm traps, mine ore, and I feel like there shouldn't be such a thing in this type of game. It just doesn't work that well. In these three and a half hours that I played the game, I did not manage to disarm a single damn trap. Next to that, there are skills like mining skill, which does I don't know what. I guess it gives you more chance to mine an ore, but it's just annoying. It's not needed. You're just gonna spam use button on the node until you get decent enough dice roll to get the ore anyway. So it's just a waste of time, nothing more. This arm trap skill is not pointless, I feel like that is good enough, but with the dice rolls, I don't know, it feels impossible to disarm it at the beginning of the game, so you'll be constantly receiving a lot of damage in between fights, which is definitely not a good thing. There's a skill also for lockpicking. The more times you lockpick chests, your skill will go up. As I said, I'm not sold on this system, I feel like it's not necessary in this game, it just doesn't work that well. Other than that, how items are placed and how locations have been done, it's all fine, it all works well. There's plenty of things to explore, plenty of things to check out, different paths to take. There's a lot of different types of enemies that you can battle. And there are also side quests, which I feel was always something of a downside of classical JRPGs. There were never any side quests, you were only focused on your main story and that was about it. Uh, side quests, if there were any, were really subtle and you didn't even know that they were there, so there was no log of any kind that would tell you, oh look, 
you talk to that guy, you have a side quest to do that, you just forgot about it eventually. And that's what I like about the Great Gaias. There's a journal where you can check what's going on. It's not the best journal in the world, but it works. Music is also really, really good. I didn't find a single annoying tune. Everything really sounds nice. Let's talk about the combat. There are plenty of enemies in the Great Gaias, different types of enemies with their resistances and vulnerabilities, which is fine. That's what the basis is of every proper RPG. You have your traditional options here, normal auto attack, skills, guard option, magic, steel, flee. Everything from traditional Japanese RPGs is here. Cool thing about it all is that every single character in the game acts differently. For example, at the beginning of the game you will find a character that is a druid. So he can use druid skills and also turn into animals, which I find very, very cool. There are 17 different characters that you can have in your party. 17. That's a huge number, all with their unique personalities and skills. That is very commendable. Combat works really well, though I did read that there's some unbalancing issues later on, which I did not experience since I'm only early in the game, so it's something to note. There are also plenty of stats that describe every single character. Stats like strength, fortitude, magic, will, reflex, accuracy and so on. While I understand what most of these should mean, what they really need to do is implement some kind of a help section that to describe all of these stats. Because I'm just guessing what they do. We need clear, exact explanations of these stats. That goes for every game. You should never ask yourself what does these stats mean. Especially in an RPG, where stats are really important. The biggest problem that I have with this game is how the enemies are done during the combat section. Some enemies seem like they were done in such a low resolution and then put into the game and never fixed later on and it just looks horrible. Other enemies look normal, like your party members. And that's how everyone should look in this game. Unfortunately, there are also situations where you will fight these low resolution enemies with normal resolution enemies and that looks absolutely horrible. I mean, it's such a huge mistake and it kills the combat for me. Combat is actually really solid and good if you disregard this, but this kills me, I cannot look at these enemies. Also, I would like them to add some more animations to the enemies, so that they look at least like your party members when they are standing still, you know, moving just a little bit so that it's more believable. As things stand, they look like they have been cut out of a cardboard box and just left there to stand, doing fuck all. Oh yeah, one more thing, if you're fighting against humans, you will see the full effect of this, what I've just mentioned. Other humans are twice the size of your party members and they're also pixelated. I mean, not pixelated, but in low resolution, so it looks horrid. I do believe that your party members should be their size, not the other way around. I like the size of these human enemies that we are fighting, but they need to be done in a normal resolution and with some animations. That would be perfect. Right now it just looks weird. Why is this guy twice the size that I am? Am I playing with hobbits here? I didn't know there were hobbits in the game. Maybe I missed that part of the story, but I really doubt it. There are other couple of annoyances connected to this game. For example, there is no change in aspect ratio, so you will play always with black borders on the sides, which should never be in modern gaming. User interface could also do with a bit of work, because I feel like when playing with keyboard and mouse, there's too many unnecessary clicks that I have to do just to change equipment and so on. These are all things that can be fixed. All the issues that I have with this game can be fixed. It just needs a little bit more work. Core of the game, which cannot be fixed, that is combat, story, characters, is all done very, very well, especially the writing part. I consider The Great Gaia, from what I've experienced so far, to be a really good game, which can be potentially a great game, one of the biggest surprises, if they fix all of these issues that I mentioned. 
Anyway, that would be all for this video. I hope you bastards enjoyed it. I'm gonna cover another in the isometric. I don't know what it is. It's more of an action-like game. Soon, in a couple of days. So stay tuned.